Hi there, I'm Black Bright. First time you're passing through, you can always like, subscribe, share. Um, I decided I'd steer away from the serious stuff for a little while. Um, fed up of all the negativity and all of that. So I've just decided to talk about the dark side of Love Island. Now it's back on. So for those of you who do not want to know about my opinion about um, what's going on with the black people in Love Island, then you can switch right off now. But I decided to focus on the black people in Love Island and um, meant, give a little mention to the others because they all make the whole. But yeah, that's what I decided to do. So um, the, the first two black people, and I mean, we've got a couple of mixed race in there, but I'm talking about black people for now, um, Leanne and Mike. Now Leanne, um, she's from Ghana, she's 22, she's custom sales, very beautiful and um, she's gone in there and she seems very lively. I mean, when you know in their little pitch, she says, I'm the life and soul of the party and then um, she doesn't stand forward for anyone until Mike Boteng comes in, another Ghanaian. So they're both from Africa, both both from similar backgrounds but it was interesting because when he asked her where she was from I had a funny feeling he wanted to know her background um, but she said London and so I'm not sure if they either of them know that they're both African descent and considering how big Africa is more than likely um, from Ghana because Boteng is is from Ghana I might be wrong but anyway they both got African backgrounds, both very beautiful people. And so what I found was interesting is that when she found out he was a policeman, he's an, well, Mike, let me talk about Mike a little bit, bloody gorgeous. Um, he's an ex-footballer and he's a police officer in London, but I believe he lives in Manchester. Anyway, the first question she, of course, asks him is, have you caught any murderers? And he kind of a bit off guard I guess that's kind of a stereotype I don't know um, you, I guess you could ask a police officer lots of things but it kind of shows you what you think about police officers and how you make judgments about police officers I mean to be honest I would never have thought he was a police officer it's kind of given um, police officers a whole different um, appeal to be honest because you can't you know, when as ordinary people outside that realm, you kind of look as police officers as being brutal, as being um, aggressive, as being nasty, as being cold, as being unfeeling. And so I guess what he does, he brings the human side of the police force onto our screens. So, yes, so we've got Mike Boteng in there. And he's paired up with Leanne. I'm not quite sure whether he paired up with her because she was the only one standing or whether he would have paired up with her had there been other people um, waiting on the sidelines and she hadn't stepped forward. So I guess we'll never know that. Um, I think, though, um, he asked her within like less than five minutes how many men she had had. And I thought that was a bit intrusive. Um, and then he kind of switched it cleverly by saying how many serious relationships she had. Now, he, she said, oh, um, none. And I think when you say none, I mean, it all depends what you call a serious. Because on the one hand, she said that she'd been in relationships, but they didn't have a label. So she was never called a girlfriend but that must mean that she was in a kind of a serious relationship for her to even want to be called a girlfriend and I think this label about boyfriend and girlfriend is a kind of a cop-out I mean either you're with a either you're in a relationship or you're not it might not be your husband it might not have elevated to your husband but you are in a kind of a pseudo relationship so the level of seriousness, I guess, depends on the individual. So she says she's never been in a serious relationship, which I think, I don't know how that bodes from a male perspective. I've got no idea. I also wonder what they mean when um, he said he hadn't dated for five months. Now, when they say they haven't dated, 
does that mean they haven't been out with a woman a woman at all because to me that is a white culture um it's not a black culture so i don't know if when a man or when they go on love island and they say they've never dated whether it means they've never been out on a proper date where somebody says look i'm taking you out on a date we're going for dinner we're going to have a glass of wine we're going to go to the movies we're going to do that or whether never being on a date means you haven't been out you, you know not even for a drink or anything like that so that part still baffles me a hunk like him you know, not going out for a date. Maybe he's um, recuperating from a relationship. Who knows? We don't know. But yeah, I thought I would kind of um, get us back in gear for Love Island. And I thought I would comment mostly on the black people. Um, only because I'm black, of course. And um, I'm, I'm more likely to notice them a bit more. I just wanted to make sure I said anything. Oh yeah, she says... Um, she's afraid of commitment because it involves trust. So I guess how how many of us feel that way? You know, where we start we start going out with somebody, um, you know, you want to commit, but you you don't know whether or not you can trust the other person. I guess that happens a lot. Um, she finds it hard to let people in. Now for him. Oh, he that that kind of rang his bell because he was saying, "Oh, well, yeah, well, you haven't met the right person then." And I think men see that as a challenge. It doesn't necessarily mean they want you, but he will see that as a challenge. And the sad thing about that is, when you're the type of person to say, "I don't let someone in," men see that as a challenge. Once you've let them in and you've made yourself vulnerable, they normally hop it. And go. So you have to be very, very careful what you disclose, especially in the early stages of a relationship. That's just my opinion. I don't think she should have said that. Well, it's hard because if you're trying to explain why you're not open, then you're going to need to let somebody know. But at the same token, um, I think you still need to express yourself openly. I mean, you might not be able to let somebody in emotionally so quickly, but you can still have fun. You don't have to be all kind of tight and reserved. I'm finding her quite reserved at the moment. But there again, it's just a day. But when you look at the dynamics between white people and black people, especially on Love Island, the white people are so free and open and don't give a toss, really. And it you know, it's really interesting watching the different dynamics. And I often wonder if that is our legacy of holding back, holding down, being reserved, wondering what people are thinking about us, not wanting to portray a, um, a negative image of ourselves. And, you know, when I look at those, um, that dynamic, I often wonder if that is the reason why that happens. You know, does it have something to do with our spiritual upbringing? Because the majority of black people are brought up that way. I mean, of course, you've got people who um, are way off the scale. But yeah, I just thought, yeah, she's very demure, very shy. She does have the qualities, I believe, for Mike Boateng. But I think she's going to need to come out a little bit, not to be too shy, um, to be more um, a bit touchy feely, not to be so closed up. And yeah, we'll have to watch this space. I was thinking about, what's his name? Connor, the one with the, the veneer teeth. I mean, you already know. Well, I suspect he's a covert narcissist only because he's already gone into victim mode. Oh, you're digging me out. You're digging me out. Just the thing is, he reckons he slept with some two, two girls on, on, a fir, on a first date. And so she has a little jibe at him. Oh, you're digging me out. And you could see he was sulking. See, I got a funny feeling he's going to be the type to play the victim. He's going to need a lot of reassurance. You know, he's probably going to be the type that everything bad happened to him. And he, he was bullied at school and blah, blah, blah. So it'd be interesting to see how he manifests. And also, do you see the way he jumped up and said, Shauna, he believed that she had slept with 20 men. So he's quite... Um, I think he was probably projecting himself there, trying to make himself not look so bad. Um, but he put his foot in it there because now that's a thumbs down for Shauna on Connor. And so we'll have to see what happens. 
Yeah, but I think those were the main ones that stood out for me. Shauna stood out, Connor stood out. Oh, and Ollie. I think he's going to have to work hard, the little rich boy. Um, he's probably used to getting what he wants, and he's going to have to put some work in. Some elbow grease on this one, I believe. Um, yeah, I think it's quite good. Is there anything else I wanted to say? I do not think so. I better get ready for work and get ready to say goodbye. So have a wonderful day and see you soon with part two.